Hi there, I'm Carol Omart Behan. Welcome to Between the Realms. This is video two, dedicated to a discussion of the book that gave rise to almost everything that you're going to see. Um, the videos that began last week on the new moon of January 2020. And mention, of course, was made during that time of this book. And ordinarily, these videos are likely going to be twice a month on the new and the full moons. But it seemed important to take some time on a separate video and simply talk more about the book itself. I want to thank the incredible, enthusiastic response to the video that um, initiated all of this, the debut video. It, it exceeded my expectations. Thank you so very much. A number of you have already subscribed to it, and I welcome others who want to consider that uh, option as well to follow these videos and um, on a more uh, knowing it when it is that they, that they um, come out into the world. So I'm speaking to you from Light Spring Glen, the home of um, the deep creativity that uh, I've been diving into for going on six years. Um, and in the corner of this little house where so much of it does take place. This book actually, when I moved here in 2013, was part way along in terms of its development, and it was literally here in this particular corner of the house where it was completed. Um, energies arriving through the window. As um, I sat here and worked, or I would go out and have um, some time uh, by the pond or in the woods. So all of that got woven into the uh, energies as well. I don't think I mentioned, I'll find out later if I've neglected it, that in between this new moon and the upcoming full moon next week is February 2nd, which is dedicated to a very ancient, beautiful, growing light, festive day that in its pagan term is Imbolc, in its very old term. So I like very much that we're using some of that energy, we're honoring that in doing this. So I'd like to give you a little background about where Answering Avalon's Call came from. And before I open the book to read from the preface, I want to point out to you what's behind me on the wall. It's a map that is the work of a wonderful gentleman in UK. I believe his home is Glastonbury. It is a map of his research in finding all of the beautiful energy lines, ley lines, something you may have heard of and more, that intersect at Glastonbury Tor. And the, it, the inspiration for this, or its inspiration to me is considerable. It's been there on the wall ever since I set up housekeeping and creative work here um, to work on this book and other projects. His information and a link to this will be in the notes below. I will return to what I'm uh, something about the cover and whose work this is, but I want to give you a background of why the book came to be. So a few minutes of reading from the preface, and then you'll have maybe a better sense of where this book came from. From the moment we enter this world, we are constantly companioned by Gaia, our beautiful Mother Earth. I was wonderfully fortunate to enjoy a carefree country childhood, so this vibrant connection with the living earth was never muted or lost. Reaching young adulthood in the turmoil of the late 1960s, the stark realities of her distress led to an abiding commitment to environmental activism. Bringing the first Earth Day to reality on my college campus is a cherished memory. The forms my involvement took following that were various and modulated by whatever else was demanding attention in my life at the time. By some fortunate synchronicity, I came to know that Gaia's resonant heart source, her heart chakra, was to be found in Glastonbury, England, where the myths of Avalon hold ancient secrets and stories. And as is true for so many, 
from the time I first knew of this, I first heard of Avalon and that's heart chakra um, as part of this, I felt a compelling and strong pull to go there. Shortly after the arrival of the new millennium, a surprising opportunity came to attend a writer's retreat there. Without doubting for one minute that I was to go, I registered for what would be, what would be a pilgrimage of soul and heart and personally transformative beyond my wildest imaginings. The story that follows picks up at that point, so all these details await. Gaia is in no less distress in these tumultuous times than was true in the 1960s. It is heartening to celebrate the gains made over these decades, but at every turn, daunting threats remain to her and our well-being. How true that is. And in this year of 2020, what we are witnessing, what we are attempting to offer, whatever it is we can do in a distant connection to it, but the fires in Australia and so many other things that are um, beyond heart-tugging. They, they break your heart in knowing more, uh, whatever details come to us. There has been some modulation of that and some relief, but still that on that goes. So that gives you a, a little bit of background of why it is I was drawn there. And I want to bring you a little further into the story by first telling you who it is that created this wonderful artwork. And what's depicted here is a moonlit view of the holy thorn, which grew, because it is not there any longer, grew on Weirial Hill. Glastonbury or ancient Avalon is was a grouping of seven islands and with the draining away of the waters through the diking and uh, ditching system begun when the first of the Romans came galloping, trotting, coming in, <laughs> they are now hills. And in the distance across um, the way is Glastonbury Tor at the top of it a tower dedicated to St. Michael, the remains of a uh, monastery, a piece of the monastery that the Benedictine monks created when they were there. Mano Menez, you will hear so much about her through the book. Thank you, Mano, again for lending your beautiful artwork to this. And before I read one last section of the book to you, I want to read the poem that goes with this, which is her creation as well. So I'll hold this up, and as you see this, here is the poem that she penned to go with this. Daring to Dream Sitting in the apple tree with the west wind swaying, my thoughts move to wandering. There are prayer ribbons sighing and dragonflies hovering with recollections murmuring, ancient chants singing, and river songs calling, a chorus of remembering with invocation seeking, their dreamers finding, ancestral keepers responding, their melodies emerging. I know my calling to go to this place as has been true for so many people um, you may be one of those wonderful people who accompanied me uh, among the pilgrimage groups that I led for uh, almost, well, over a decade, really, by the time all was said and done. And some of that is, again, within the covers of this book. But I want to connect you with the reason the book really came forward at all, and that is an individual that I encountered when I first made the trip there in 2001. Um, as a person who prior to this as a writer had already written two novels and those had gone out in the world, I had gone, uh, beckoned to be on this incredible women's retreat there, writer, women writers retreat, knowing that we would dive deep into our creativity. But more was waiting for me than um, I had bargained for, to say the very least. And I want to take you to when it was that this occurred. The woman, and I thank her always, 
who led this retreat is a wonderful writer whose name is Emily Hamlin. Thank you, Emily. It's been a while now since our paths have crossed, but certainly they did in such an amazing and fabulous way in going to Glastonbury that time. So we'd arrived um, later in July of 2001. And uh, we set up our residence in a beautiful um, retreat house overlooking the ruins of Glastonbury Abbey. I want to share with you what happened um, there one of the days as we were working away, all of us women writers, delving into the depths of our creativity. Under Emily's skillful guidance, we were all happily diving deep into our creative writing depths. One afternoon, she announced that she would be leading us in what promised to be at the least an intriguing guided meditation, possibly even a personally powerful one. We would visualize ourselves at a crossroads and see a person coming towards us who we would meet and engage in conversation. This person might offer himself or herself as a character with whom we could do further work. So we each found a spot to stretch out comfortably on the floor of our marvelous workroom, the enormous high ceiling Victorian parlor of Abbey House. Telling us to take several deep centering breaths, Emily guided us into our inner landscape. I found myself in a country setting at the promised crossroads and knew at once that it was a long ago time of summer sets past. Beautiful fields bordered by low wooded hills stretched out around me on a summer's day. The roads are empty at first glance. Then in the distance appeared the figure of a woman coming along the lane towards me. I could see she wore a long dress or skirt. I could also see that she was looking at me with interest. Something in all of this caused me to catch my breath, and every one of my senses signaled the aliveness of the unfolding scene. I felt my imaginal self standing stock still as she drew near enough for our eyes to lock together. She was a young woman of slight but sturdy build with penetrating dark eyes and wavy dark hair to her shoulders. The air between us became charged with an unnameable energy. I felt tears pricking my eyes, my physical eyes. A few tears escaped and ran down my face as I lay there on the floor, trying to not come out of the meditation focus. As the distance closed between us, a sob rose in my throat. Worried that I might disturb other people in the room, I clenched my hands at my sides, trying to stay in control. It was useless. The best I could do was muffle my sobbing as she came to stand in front of me, her beautiful dark eyes offering a friendly and curious regard. We stood arm's length from each other, from, from each other, looking deeply into one another's face, neither saying a word. Were we both crying? By now, I was gasping for breath. Both my conscious and imaginal self were weeping. If she and I spoke any words, I never heard them. I was completely engulfed with the emotions surging through me. Somewhere in the room, I heard another woman sobbing with her own fierce experience. Emily gently called us back and asked us to find someone to share the exercise with. The two of us who had wept quickly found each other. Hers had been an encounter with her deceased father and I was very moved by her story. She found my meditation encounter to be quite awesome, too. I was so grateful to ground some of this extraordinary energy and excited at the prospect of working with this wonderful character. That wonderful character in due time 
with some hints before I returned to returned home at the end of that retreat turned out to be not a character, but my past life self. And this connection grew and grew over the years that followed, pouring into journals, coming to me in dreams, sometimes visions. And on my many return trips to England, we encountered each other again. It was that that I thought the book would be, would be our story, but has grown into something much more. Answering Avalon's call became the journey I took to know more about myself as an earth healer in this lifetime. So that gives you an introduction to what this is. The book is available through me, signed copies. You'll find information at the link that I will be putting below. You can encounter it <laughs> typically as one does through Amazon. The price is a bit higher than there than it is through here. So you might want to look at considering seeing if I have a copy available and I'm going to be getting new ones in very shortly. Regardless, I thank you so much for listening to this introduction, joining me today, uh, allowing me to share this amazing particular journey of my lifetime. And I want to read one more thing, if I can come to it quickly enough, because at the beginning of each chapter, I include a quote that seems to capture some of uh, what ends up or what became included in that chapter and so with this I will end this video Muriel Rukeyser Muriel Rukeyser I'm sure that's the right way to say it says this at the beginning of this chapter she asks what would happen if one woman told the truth about her life the world would split open well my world certainly did and it has been and continues to be an amazing journey. Thank you so much for coming to this video and following me through this with the sharing that I have done. There will be a video in another week's time for the full moon. Happy Imolk. Take good care. Bye for now.